Hi, welcome to the Legislators Lounge. I'm Jim Webb, the host of the ho show. My co-host is Brian Ciaricello. Today with us we have um, Kevin Coyle, uh, uh, Commissioner Kevin Coyle, and we also have Representative Kevin Waterhouse, and he's the candidate for the Commissioner's Office um, in the county. Welcome, gentlemen. We appreciate you coming by on our show. Uh, let's start by maybe giving the audience a little bit of background about yourselves, and uh, we'll start with um, uh, Kevin Waterhouse, if you want. Okay, thank you, Brian and Jim. Uh, my name is Kevin Waterhouse. I was born in Windham. I own Waterhouse's Country Store there. I've run the business for 23 years. Uh, it's been my pleasure to serve in the State House of Representatives for 10 of the last 12 years. I've served on public works and highways, and I absolutely love it. I will feel very bad leaving the House because of the people we get to work with up there. Uh, but I am seeking the seat of Commissioner for Rockingham County in District 3, which includes Derry, London, Dairy, Windham, Auburn, Chester, Candia, Northwoods, Deerfield, and Nottingham. And I have served in the Knights of Columbus and St. Mark's in Londonderry for the last 10 years. I'm also a member of the American Legion in Windham. Uh, it's been my pleasure to try to be of service to New Hampshire. I absolutely love it. I'm the son of a state trooper uh, and the grandson of a state representative and state senator that actually served this district here, uh, District 19. And so I feel like I'm carrying on the family tradition, and so I'd appreciate uh, becoming county commissioner. I love the county, and I think we can do some good work over there. Great. Commissioner Coyle. Hi, I'm Kevin Coyle. Uh, many of you know me. I've uh, lived in Derry for 43 years. Um, I've served on the Derry Town Council for six years, not as long as Brian, but uh, almost. Uh, I think he had to you know, have his head examined for staying too long. Um, <laughs> I uh, am a graduate of Pinkerton Academy, um, Keene State College, and uh, I graduated law school um, in North Carolina. Um, I've prosecuted for the town of Londonderry for 19 years. I've been your commissioner for a year and a half. Uh, I think we've done good things in Rockingham uh, over the year, last year and a half. We've uh, managed to keep taxes uh, level, or in uh, Derry's case, uh, reduced by a penny. Um, we've made significant changes, cutting the number of employees uh, hired by the county, uh, and I th want to continue that work as county commissioner, and I think Derry uh, needs a commissioner that represents its interest and not that of the rest of the county. So. Great. And um, I'll, I'll start the first question. What does, what does a commissioner, what's their job in, in, uh entail for, for an everyday, you know, what's the everyday life of a commissioner? So the everyday life of the commissioner is there are three of us um, and we don't have a county manager. So we run uh, the general um, business of the county. Um, we meet on a weekly basis. We usually go, depending on the commissioner, two or three times a week to the county. Um, we have a weekly meeting uh, at which we decide the business. Now we do have department heads in each of the departments. Uh, the major departments are the sheriff's office, the county attorney's office, and uh, the biggest uh, is the nursing home. Um, and each of those people usually meet with us on Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on which day of the week we're meeting. Uh, and we just make the decisions and run the general day-to-day -day operations of the county. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, there are some who propose that we should have a um, county manager, as a lot of the counties do. I'm not a big believer in that. Um, but we are, the one, we are the elected people who make the decisions. Awesome. All right. And, um, and Kevin's on the executive, executive board. Executive I right come now. from the issue with a slightly different perspective than Commissioner Coyle. I've been in the county delegation, which is the legislative branch of the county, for 10 years now. We consider the commissioners to be the executive branch. And having served in the legislative branch, we've got 90 members of the delegation that we split up into subcommittees to deal with the budget. So we do work with the sheriff's department, with the jail, with the registrar of deeds, the county attorney, and by serving on the subcommittees, you get an inside look into their budget, how the department heads report to the commissioners, how the commissioners present us with the budget, and then we're the ones that hold the public hearings that make sure that the budget is doing what we needed to do. After we've completed the budget work, we hand it back to the commissioners, and they're responsible for the day-to-day -day running of the county. Right. All right. Um, I'll I'll start with a question that we all got our tax bills or, or probably got it today or yesterday or yeah, I got mine yesterday so um, 
And the county is the lowest portion of our bill, luckily. Uh, so uh, we, we it, it, they pretty much run a tight ship over there in the county. Um, I'll, I'll start with you, um, Kevin Waterhouse. Uh, what, what, what can we do to keep the taxes low? And do you have any plans to try to reduce spending even more? I believe the county is very, very well run. The Registrar of Deeds earns us a lot of money because of the work that Kathy Stacy does over there. Uh, that's actually a profit center for the county. But it's my opinion that the county is the safety net for the folks. It provides that basic support that when people get in trouble, be it the sheriff's office, the jail, or the, uh, the nursing home, that's where government is actually there to lend a hand. And so I am troubled by looking at county government in just a dollars and cents. We have been very unnoticed in that we don't cause tax problems for anyone. It's not like the school districts where they're going up by double digits every time. Uh, Rockingham County has maintained a very level tax rate for the citizens while providing excellent service. We can be very proud of our nursing home. We can be very proud of our county attorney and the jail. We're doing good work and we're learning all the time. Something to save money is we need to get more bang for the buck <coughs> out of drug court because we need to get our overcrowding in the jail handled and that's where we can send money, uh, save money, is by not having everybody in jail. Unfortunately right now for the few people that are being helped it's just not cost effective and we find that at the county level a lot. Sometimes we need to keep up program even though it looks like we're losing money and it looks like you need to sacrifice some tax dollars to always be there to provide the needed services uh, the county expects of us. We are the lifeline. Okay, and Kevin? So when I got to the county, I found that there were a number of programs that were overstaffed um, and that there were some individuals who had, we had one individual there who was making over $100,000 a year and her job was effectively to pay one bill a year. And nobody had really looked at the positions that we had um, and, and looked at whether we should you know, be making changes. When I saw that position, that position is now covered by one person a month about five hours. And we were paying this person $100,000 a year. And the commissioners prior to, to myself and the delegation let that go on for a decade. That was wrong. There are lots of changes that we, could ha we should make at the county. I know lots of them right now that need to be made. There are changes that need to be made in the nursing home, which is our biggest expense, driv expense driver. Um, and, and there are things that we can still provide quality service to people at a significantly reduced cost. Um, and I think that just saying, you know, we want to leave things alone because it runs well, I don't think that's a good idea. And when I got there, I certainly, you know, I don't want to say stirred things up, but I certainly looked at every department to see what changes could be made, and I think that we've done a really decent job. We've eliminated about 4% of our staff, which really was unnecessary, and we have not really reduced the level of service in any significant way. Okay, yeah, and, and I know this was your first term as yeah. commissioner, and I know there was a little bit of controversy with the adult daycare, so... We've seen some of that in the paper. If you want to, yeah. if you want to talk about that, that would be great. Um, you know, the adult day care program was a program. Rockingham County is three hundred thousand dollars, mm -hmm. three hundred thousand people. The adult day care program was serving, on average, twelve people a day, um, and had seventeen enrolled participants out of three hundred thousand. Not one of those participants was from Wyndham, Derry, Londonderry, Auburn, Candia, Deerfield, Northwood, or Nottingham. Not one of them. So when I looked at it, I said, is, is this program valuable to the citizens I represent? And I came to the conclusion, no. But what I learned was that over a decade, it had lost a million dollars. And in addition, was hurting private businesses who provided the same service. And my philosophy is that in government, we're there to provide the necessary services that the private sector doesn't supply. 
In Rockingham County, there were 13 agencies that supplied adult medical daycare, one in Derry, uh, one in Hampstead, uh, very close to the county facilities. And we were hurting them by, by running an inefficient program. So we looked at it and said, what can we do to make this program more efficient? And we tried that for a period of time. It continued to lose money and get worse. Uh, so we did, made the difficult decision that we should close it. Um, and the state reps, Mr. Waterhouse being one of them, or Representative Waterhouse being one of them, were very vocal in, in opposition to that. But my philosophy of government is you should provide the service that the private sector doesn't. And in this case, the private sector does. Every one of the people that uh, was in adult medical daycare have gone to private businesses. Those private businesses are now flourishing because we closed our program. That's what I thought government should do, and I think we made the right decision. And in fact, besides state representatives, I got not one constituent complaint that we closed adult medical daycare. Kevin, what's your, your take on it? I have a very different take on it. Uh, we heard from a lot of constituents that were hurt by this. The idea of saying that we have such a wonderful nursing home in Rockingham County, which is the envy of the state of New Hampshire, that we take such quality care of our seniors that are in need, and to say that a wonderful program like Adult Medical Daycare Center, which is so instrumental in giving a short break to the people that are saddled with this huge burden of taking care of somebody that may be elderly and infirm, and the county's so good at doing that type of thing, to say to those people, the county is isn't that in that business anymore because well in fact for this all we had to do was refurbish a bus or get a bus donated to us in order to have the transportation we needed for it and we needed to market the program I thought it was very disingenuous of the commissioners to come to us at the beginning of this last term to say the plan is to shut it and when we asked them very very sincerely could we go out and market the program this is a service the county needs to provide it shouldn't be in uh, all privatization that we needed their help I feel that we got ignored. I feel that the 90 members of the delegation that asked for this program to be kept open and marketed were ignored by the commissioners. One of the major reasons I'm running is because I feel that letting go of all of these valuable people, as long as it's not hurting the taxpayers, but it is providing the services that are necessary to the county, is a sacrifice that we make so that we are there for those people that need our help. I also have to uh, disagree with Commissioner Coyle <coughs> about uh, the person that was the one person in the department that was writing the one check per month, uh, that has changed very recently. It hasn't been for a decade that, that person was making over $100,000 in doing new job. It was very recently that the state had a whole different way of dealing with the county that said, all right, we're going to uh, do this. We will package up all of the expenses that you have, and we're going to look at the revenues you have, and then we will make sure that that one check is issued. So I agree that it is um, a change that needed to be made. I just object to how the changes are made. It used to be that the employees felt very valued in Rockingham County. They felt that they trusted the commissioners and the department heads to look out for them, and that if they finished their long-term service, they were given a party and said, thank you for your service, and it's time to go. Now it seems like they're being walked to their cars by security. It's, we don't have need for your services anymore, and we've come, we don't even have a human resources department anymore. We have an interim uh, human resources person that is now directed to be underfinanced. And I don't think the employees of Rockingham County necessarily want to go to the finance director to deal with their human resources problems. So I really think that we need to take a better look at how we handle the uh, micromanagement of these departments to get rid of people that are wasteful, sure. But if they're being wasted in one area, we should be looking for other tasks and duties for them to be formed in another area. You get All right. um, well, just to speak of um, how many employees does the county have? Over 600. Over 600 employees yeah. working at the, the entire <coughs> county? Or the entire the county, from, from maintenance through the uh, county attorney's office, the sheriff's department, the jail, um, 
all of those departments. We have uh, over 600 employees. And um, I know being on the executive committee myself that uh, we, are, we have a problem finding people to fill some of the positions that we have at the county. Um, f for well, instance, corrections. There, yeah, corrections are always understaffed. Well, I'd be happy to talk about that. Um, corrections is a, is a place where, frankly, um, we underpay. Um, would you want to work at the jail? I'm going to ask you this, Jim. You're a union member. Would you want to start working at a jail at $15 an hour? I, I tell you, no, because... And, and it's difficult for us to find people who want to, to serve at that. We've negotiated, and, and I say we, I mean the county has negotiated with them, the union for um, the corrections officers, for five years. And we've proposed contracts, which I thought were, at this time, was a very good contract. Uh, some people were going to see a $5 an hour raise, and they rejected it. Um, and they did that because they have a, a health care program that is uh, ex extraordinarily rich and which, frankly, we can't afford. Um, so we put a proposal there that was recommended by the Teamsters Union to them, and they rejected it. We have settled, uh, one of the things I should have said, we have settled s six of the seven union contracts um, that were outstanding when I walked into office a year and a half ago. Um, but we haven't been able to do that one. Um, and because of that, the people on the lower end of the jail are, are hurting. And we're trying hard to resolve that. But unless the, the union comes together, it's going to be a difficult task. The correctional officers actually lost their representation uh, because the Teamsters felt that they did not seriously uh, consider the last offer that the commissioners were able to make. And I agree, although I don't have the details of it not being in that position, I, I feel it was probably a very fair contract that would have given them more dollars per hour while taking away this lexus of health care plans that they had been given. And that was something that needed to be done. But when the Teamsters has actually said to these folks, you should have accepted that offer, and so we're not going to represent you any longer. They need to go out and find new representation to get back to the table to the commission, and they need to get their act together and accept a good, fair contract. I don't like paying overtime to people. I don't like the jail having people that have worked a shift and a half or two shifts. That causes safety problems. I want us to be able to hire better people and keep them on, and you need money to do that. Right. Are the overtime lines uh, over overextended because we, we, we can't hire enough people? Is that the case? So um, <clears throat> overall last year, the budget for the jail came in significantly lower than we had budgeted. Um, but the overtime line, as you might expect, went significantly over. Um, and I agree with uh, Representative Waterhouse that, you know, we don't want to see people overworked uh, at the jail uh, because they're understaffed. Um, but... Uh, we, this year we made an adjustment so that, you remember in Derry, sometimes we had departments that way overspent overtime. So we made an adjustment so we would accurately f reflect what overtime was. Um, but, you know, the jail is going to be a difficult thing until they get good union representation and, and talk. Well, it's my understanding that they, vo they did not vote for the contract, and that's why the, it, it didn't go, and the w reason why the teams just left because they've been working with them for years trying to get a contract, yeah. and then when they didn't vote for it, the team says just we can't give you get you anything more than we already got you, so that's that's why that fell apart. And now they would have had to start over anyway, whether they went for a um, you know a different union or whatever. Everything had to start over anyway, I, th I believe by law. Yes, they to do. Although they can work <coughs> from uh, some of the things they've accomplished. They can say, we've gone to th this stage of the negotiation. Let's go from there. And hopefully a lot of this groundwork has been settled and they won't have to rehash it. Hey, even a new union, though, they'd be able to do that because yes. they've, they've already agreed on a lot of stuff. So it's something that has a framework. To, but the, the fact is, is that people, 
I know my company, when I have to work overtime, it's a lot of forced mandatory overtime. Is that the type of overtime that we're, we're putting on these guys, or are they volunteering uh, they're, for they're it? They're both. They're, they're forced overtime and um, voluntary overtime. We have, over the last six months, been able to hire a number of correction officers, so the overtime number is coming down slightly, uh, and the, the so, so, quote-unquote forced overtime is... Um, a lot less, but you've got to remember a lot of these are group two employees and they like overtime because it builds their pension. Um, so there are, there, some of them are thrilled that they get overtime, especially it, it when they're closer. It builds their pension? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, okay. Absolutely. Right. Well, is it, is it the, company, the last three years? That, the highest three years. Oh, okay. Just like uh, the municipalities yeah. that we deal with. Right. Yeah. Um, let's talk about, we, we mentioned the daycare and some of the citizens mm -hmm. that weren't using that program. Let's talk about dispatch. I know the county has their own dispatch, um, and that's a portion of the budget that we probably in Derry don't use. So was there cuts there? Well, you know, that's an interesting... Uh, when I first got there, Brian, there was a, a study that was done um, for the Sheriff's Department. One of the things it recommended was that we start charging those towns that use dispatch, dispatch <coughs> fees. Because like Derry doesn't use dispatch, Wyndham doesn't use dispatch, Londonderry doesn't use dispatch, Portsmouth doesn't lose, use dispatch, all of the big towns don't use dispatch. Uh, and this study said, hey, you know, every other county charges those people who use dispatch. Why don't you? Uh, and it became a big political football when we wanted to charge for dispatch. I think representing Derry and Wyndham and Londonderry um, which pay $8 million in county taxes, that we should not be subsidizing the smaller towns um, like Newcastle, who has a tax rate of $5. We shouldn't be subsidizing them by providing them dispatch. Um, but many state reps came out against that, um, and I'd be interested in how Mr. Waterhouse feels about it. Well, again, uh, Commissioner Coyle and I come down on different sides of this issue, too. The county needs to have the dispatch center. It has it. So Londonderry, Derry, and Windham can use it as a backup. It's also there for coordination. But we have a lot of small towns that just cannot take their limited dollars away from what they need to do as a town and take over a county function. County is difficult. A lot of people up the state think we should get rid of this whole level of government. It should be from the town right to the, to the state. But geographically, that just doesn't work. We need the counties to bring it down to a geographic uh, area that can be managed. And I know Commissioner Coyle does feel like he only represents District 3, the towns in the western part of the state. But as state representatives, we realize when our town elects us, we go to serve the whole state. And yes, we keep our own constituents in mind, but you can't be parochial. You can't say, this is my Ballywick and we're going to fight you folks over there. You have to be a commissioner for the whole county. And so you have to look out for all those to towns and say, this is obviously a county function and we're going to be there. If Derry, and Derry's a marvelous city that can uh, handle its own dispatch, and well, they should, but they look looked at the county to be the backup, and you can't take that away from everyone just because Windham, Derry, and Londonderry are affluent enough and they want to handle it themselves. Right, and there was... Th so you're saying that Newcastle isn't wealthy enough that they could support uh, paying a fee? Their no, tax New rate's Castle, $5. I consider it to be a neighborhood of Portsmouth, and I do know that they are enviable in their tax base over there, right. but I, I don't think that uh, the Deerfields, the Nottinghams, the uh, Raymonds of the state are in the same category with uh, the Newcastle. Right. So let's flip this around for a quick second. Sure. I mean, so I'm, am I going to assume that because Derry's the largest uh, town in Rockingham County that we ha we have the most people in the nursing home? Because if we get into a fee for the use of certain services, now would we would Derry, we lose out by surprisingly, Brian? Derry is not the largest user of oh, the okay. nursing home. It's Exeter. Okay. Um, so. The nursing home really supports the middle of Rockingham County, not so much Derry, not, not that there aren't Derry residents, there clearly are, um, but it supports really where it is. So there's a lot of Raymond people and Epping people and Exeter people, but that's who goes 
to that nursing home. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a lot of Wyndham people, surprisingly, because they have nursing homes in Wyndham. Um, but I, I just want to get back to one thing that Representative Waterhouse said. You know, it's a fundamental disagreement between he and I. You represent Derry, in my opinion, when you go up to Concord. You don't represent the whole state of New Hampshire. You should first be looking out for the interests of Derry. I look out for the interests of, of District 3 because that's who elected me. The whole county didn't elect me. I'm not a, I'm not a county attorney or a sheriff. I'm a representative of District 3, and that's a fundamental disagreement between Representative Waterhouse and I. He should be representing Derry, Lunday, Wyndham, Auburn, Chester, Candia, Deerfield, Northwood, and Nottingham. But he wants to represent the whole, the whole county, and that's not what the system is set up for. And it is a disagreement that we have. I would have to um, I, I kind, of, I kind of agree with you, Kevin, on that it is, and that's what the executive board is for, is to represent the entire county, the commissioners. And by the way, um, why don't you explain to the people out there that are watching, how many commissioners do we have? Three. Okay. Three districts. And how does, uh, what is the, ro the term rotation on them? So this term um, that Representative Waterhouse and I are competing for is four years. Um, we... Every, every three year, I'm sorry, every three terms is a four year term. So this for Derry, uh, for Derry, I should say, for District 3, is um, a four year term. Uh, Tom Tomborello is in a four year term right now, so he will remain as a commissioner. And Commissioner Pratt, um, who represents uh, the Seacoast area and a little bit of the interior of Rockingham County, uh, is also up for re-election. I'm just going to touch base on what we're, we're talking about with the um representation yep. so as in Derry the only people that could vote for me at the State House would be Derry residents that's hence that's why we call it representatives but for commissioner you're getting votes from all these various towns Are absolutely you know, yeah. and, I, and I believe in representing those but I don't get votes from Portsmouth and I don't get votes from Exeter no, uh, I, so I don't represent I don't see myself as representing them and representative Waterhouse thinks he represents all, would represent all of them I disagree with that okay yeah, it, to me, it's a fundamental uh, difference of how we would handle the position. And uh, yes, you have to serve your constituents. But as the commissioner, you have to run the whole government, the whole county. And yes, you need to go back to your constituency and market the services to educate them as what to the county is there for and how it can be helpful to them. But you can't say, um, well, UNH Cooperative Extension. It probably gets more use if you're near Durham. It probably gets more year use if you're near Exeter. But should we say, well, let's get rid of the cooperative extension because Derry and Windham and Londonderry aren't taking advantage of that? We would end up without any county services because Derry would be able to handle most of these things on their own. But would Nottingham be able to do it without the county help? Would Deerfield, would Chester or Candia? And I don't believe so. I think that w when the folks of District 3 elect a commissioner it's to run the government of the whole county and you can't be splitting it up saying if uh, the residents of Londonderry aren't close enough to Brentwood to take advantage of a program then we need to cut the program out uh, it's just not feasible for a government to work that way uh, I, I, under I understand exactly what you're saying I understand exactly what you're saying um, the, the idea, though, is that you are sent there to represent your district. There are three districts. You need two of the three votes. So it's kind of, it's sort of like the zoning board or whatever. You need the votes to get something passed. So you would have to have another commissioner agree with you to, to either kill or, or pass something. So it's, right. not, it's not simply you. Yep. Uh, it's, that's why there are three commissioners, so that, that there won't be any tie there won't be any tie it has to be a tiebreaker you know to get something passed I'd like to touch on something that Commissioner Quill mentioned earlier in that some people look at other counties in the state and said well they hire a business manager so therefore they pay their commissioners less they don't put as much responsibility on them I like the way Rockingham County does it we pay our commissioners a little more and we expect them to work with the department heads to be in charge <laughs> if we had a paid professional in there well it'd be harder to get rid of them if we didn't like what they're doing 
going. With this, we have an elected official. I decided I didn't like what was happening there. I could take it upon myself to primary that individual to go in and seek a different solution. If we uh, took power away from the commissioners and gave it, gave it to a paid professional, it would be the bureaucracy that would be the tail wagging the dog. We have a meeting of uh, the officers of the committee, uh, the executive committee coming up Monday because one of the representatives saw so many things upsetting happening in this last two years that she wants us to look at changing the process. And I'm going to be right there saying, I disagree. I think it is a good process because if you see a problem, you throw the person out that you th think is the problem and you start over again with somebody new. And with a paid provision, uh, professional, it'd be much harder to change. So I, let me just touch on that. We are in total agreement. Um, I do think the commissioners are paid too much money. Uh, nobody asked my opinion at the last meeting, but, but I do. But I don't disagree. I don't think that Rockingham County needs uh, an administrator. I think that's a bad idea. Um, the person that came that uh, Representative Waterhouse is talking about um, had a lot of facts that were incorrect. Um, and she's working on a, the presumption that she wants um, uh, a administrator. I think that's bad for Rockingham County. We've we've worked well. We have the low one of the lowest tax rates in the state on uh, countywide. I don't think we should change it. I do think the commissioners have paid too much money, however. One of the representatives, Ken Wilder, uh, Wilder, has been a part of the county government for the last 18 years, and he's done study after study, and every term he comes in and he compares Rockingham County to the other counties, and per capita, we have a very low tax rate, we have amazingly good services, and we've had a real pride in how Rockingham County serves and I want to continue that. I think that uh, what I can bring to this job is the communication with the folks in the legislature that serve in the delegation. Having been with them for the last 10 years, I know how busy they are and how little time they can spare for the county, but you need to keep them informed. The communication has to be there. Let them know why you're coming to the uh, decisions that you're coming to. One of my faults with how the daycare program was canceled is that we'd set up a committee of the delegation to look at how it could be marketed. Commissioners sent representation to that committee, said yes, this is what we were going to do. Nothing got done. We sent uh, Representative John O'Connor here in Win uh, Derry to the Marion Garish nursing home and said, was this daycare center marketed to you folks? and he learned it was not. So he came here to the town uh, center and said, was it marketed here? And it was not. I feel that when they had an open house for the nursing home as at all, uh, for the whole nursing home, they had one table that talked about, oh yes, we also have a adult medical daycare center. And that obviously wasn't enough. Yes, the attendance in the program was small, but I think it's up to somebody to be energetic enough to go to every uh, program for the elderly, the senior citizen committees, uh, and say, this is here. These are the services the county's already paying for, and an amazingly small hit on your wallet. We're not the ones anybody complains about. In Windham, nobody complains about the town budget because they keep the taxes flat. And nobody complains about the county budget because we're almost unnoticed to them. It's, they're just out there. What they complain about, unfortunately, is the school board. What did that daycare cost us per thousand on our taxes by cutting it? How much did we save? I think you can look at that in a lot of ways. It was a service that was provided. If you had a registered nurse working No, no, there, I mean as far as the dollars. What was I the, mean, what, how what many was pennies this? did it cost if us? If you uh, felt that we lost $40,000 out of this last budget to keep it, then it wouldn't even be a penny on the dollar. And I agree with that. But the, the, the fundamental difference between us is it's, it's a service that's not provided by any other county in the state of New Hampshire, including Hillsborough County. Every one of them has closed their adult medical daycare. Why? Because they're competing against private businesses. The government should not, I'm a Republican, and the government should not be competing against private businesses. That is fundamentally wrong, and I disagree that that's what we should be doing. And Representative Waterhouse wants to reopen a program that was a failure, 
and, and that is wrong. You should not be advocating as a Republican that you want to open another government program, because that's wrong, when no other county does it, and it's not necessary because it's provided in the private sector. Well, to be in, to be in all fairness, it was a program that was already established. Absolutely. The question really was whether it should be cut or not. I understand your, your yeah. argument on that, but I want to change it up a little bit, because the, I guess the biggest news driver for Rockingham County was the county attorney's office. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how much you can talk about that, but it, but it needs to maybe you know we've we've seen a lot of news articles over the, over the year about it. So if you want to touch base on that, if you'd like, um, you know, there's not a lot I can say. There is a petition to remove the county attorney, which details a lot of allegations of what's happened over the last 15 years of his tenure. Um, we have been fully briefed on the investigation, that being the county commissioners, and not one, including Commissioner Pratt, who is uh, Attorney Reams's friend, disagrees that he should be removed. Um, at this point, he has become a distraction um, to running the county government, uh, and I would hopefully uh, request, you know, at some point that he resign. He is being ineffectual in the office right now, and really. Um, I think has been a big distraction for us. Um, and really he's, you know, done some things that I find offensive as both a lawyer and, and as an individual and taxpayer of Rockingham County. Um, and, you know, his treatment of women has been terrible. Um, and, and I, you know, I'd ask anybody that's interested to read that 30-page uh, petition of the things that he's done because some of them are reprehensible. Now, we, his term is up uh, in November, I believe? Uh, well, technically January. And he's not running again. He had mentioned that. He says that, he's so. not running. What, what's your take on that, Kevin? Well, I come down again in a very different way. Jim Reams has served this county extraordinarily well, extraordinarily well for 16 years, and I thought it was a horrible thing for an attorney general to come in and take an elected f official out of his elected duties with no criminal charges, which is patently illegal, and the judges have said that's illegal. They, the commissioners never should have allowed an attorney general to come in and said, we have suspicions. We have minor acts over a course of 12 years that we think that we can put all together and have a little thing here and a little thing here and bring it up to be, you know, tantamount to criminal charges. They have destroyed Attorney Reams' reputation to the point where he can't run for re-election. Uh, so I've chosen to support Pat Conway from his office, a wonderful attorney who's the lead prosecutor over there, and she's going to be seeking the county attorney's office. The first thing I did when I met Pat Conway, I said, you're an attractive young woman. You've been working in this office now for a lot of years. Ever, one day, did you feel uncomfortable working in that office? She looked me in the eye and said, no, I did not. So I know that there have been people that have leveled allegations. We all know allegations are easy to come by. But a couple of policy decisions from how drug forfeiture money should have been used that should have come to the delegation and not try to be trumped up into a, a criminal charge. Uh, the idea of we lost our assistant county attorney and our victim liaison attorney they resigned because their reputations were being ruined, and as soon as they admitted to resign, well, there were no charges. We didn't have a problem with you. We were doing this to you to get to Attorney Reams. And again, somebody needs to be over there standing up for our employees and our elected official to say that this is not right. Attorney Reams does not deserve the reputation that he's been given. He's been really good for this county. Uh, he's been wonderful about getting federal grants in to do the work of the county attorney. And it's going to be big shoes for him to, to fill. But I think that the commissioners were in a position where that is, they should have held up their hand to the attorney general and said, this is a political witch hunt. You're coming down here with no criminal charges and you're taking our employee away. He's going to sit at home earning $80,000 a year and doing nothing. And you're going to have an attorney general that's going to come in and say, I'm your atta acting attorney, uh, county attorney. And the acting county attorney actually wanted to present a budget 
to the delegation. This is what I think that the county attorney's office in Rockingham County should spend. We disagreed with what he was doing. And it seemed like he was almost backing up his case by saying, well, we have three victim liaison people. One of them must be a supervisor of the other two. Well, no, we didn't agree because each victim liaison representative is assigned an attorney to work on that case. They don't need a supervisor to be paid more money to do that. But this is what the attorney general brought to us saying, but this is what other counties do. He should have stayed out of Rockingham County. Uh, Jim Ream should not resign. He should fill out the end of his office and complete his honorable service to Rockingham and he should be thanked for that service and he should be apologized to. Let me just respond to that. Sure. Uh, have you read the petition? I have not. You should. Uh, and, it's, and it's disrespectful to all of the women in the office named in that petition that you haven't read it and made those statements. Because he has sexually harassed women for the last decade, more than the last decade, since the time he began service. And for you to say that is offensive to women, that you have not read the petition and what he's done. There are women who today shake at what he has done to them. Uh, and, and it's offensive that you would say that. Um, and I understand that you're supporting your fellow Republican, but you should first know what he did. And you haven't taken the opportunity to read that, those things. And before you make uh, statements like this uh, about the minor allegations, he misused $250,000 of county money. Uh, he went on trips to Hawaii, uh, paid for uh, by this forfeiture fund. These are things that, that you should know about before you support somebody. Uh, and I find it offensive that you would say the things that you do, and, and every woman that watches this show should find it offensive. Well, we could always have allegations, and the, the first allegation came up uh, almost 16 years ago, and the person hasn't worked for the county in a long time. And to go back and rehash these things that were handled by human resources at the time and never rose to a criminal charge, that they were handled, we thought they were handled. We thought they had been taken care of. And to rehash, to bring it up, to say this now rises to the level of a criminal charge is just inappropriate. They were on a fishing expedition to see what they could find, and they didn't find anything, or there would be criminal charges based. And as far as the drug forfeiture money, Attorney Reams became very influential in uh, an organization that looked at all the county attorneys and by going there and being a leader of that organization he went to the conventions he taught classes he represented Rockingham he was there if there was federal money to be offered because the feds do go to these same conventions and I heard the commissioner when these charges were first leveled saying that attorney Reigns is off on junkins to use pejorative words about how the Attorney General chose to function, how he chose to do his job, and to say it, it sounds like well, it's inappropriate. Was this one of the reasons why the feds got involved? Was, was that part of the investigation? Uh, the, the use of funds? Money. Use of federal money, absolutely. But, but did they bow out of that whole thing? I mean, how did that end They up? let the Attorney General handle it. Okay. So they let it be. It, uh, most, it was of the, most of the money that was misused was, was uh, state money. Okay, now you're using the words misused, but there's been no charges in all fairness. Well, well you know, it's interesting. You know, you have to understand the difference between uh, criminal charges and civil charges. Sexual harassment is not a criminal charge unless you guys decide to make it one. That's not a, but it still is a, a wrong. You know, sexually harassed women is wrong. It may not rise, rise to the level of a crime, but it should not go on in an office, in any office, and especially a, of a county attorney. It should not go on. Does that mean if you, if, you know, I sexually harass the employees of Rockingham County that I shouldn't be removed? Absolutely, I should be removed. It, just because you're an elected official, you don't get uh, a carte blanche to do whatever you want, to sexually har harass people. That's wrong. Um, and what he did was, in effect, wrong. I can agree with Commissioner Coyle of the first part of the statement is that if you do sexually harass women, you are wrong, and that is not acceptable in any case. And I wouldn't stand up for anybody I felt did. The problem is that 
the accusations are not provable, that nobody came and made statements and said, I want you to use my case to press charges against this. They were innuendo. So you there feel it's things, more of a he said, she said type that, that's situation? Absolutely, obviously it is. Point. That's absolutely not true. Okay. And, if, and if Representative Waterhouse had actually read the petition, there are many women who are going to come forward and testify as to what Attorney Reams did. Now, is that petition public? Absolutely. And where would someone? Uh, you can go to the Merrimack County Superior Court and get it. Right. It's also online because the union leader published it. Uh, well, I would figure, yeah, it must, must be on the Internet. Yeah, uh, Change it, it up just a little bit. I want to stay in the county real quick because uh, that's my um, responsibility uh, at the county level. Um, there was a question about keeping good attorneys um, at the county level. And I looked at the, the pay scales, and I noticed that we were, for starter salaries, we were really good. Yeah. Years one, two, and three. And then, it, then, you know, years four, five, and six, it looked like uh, other counties were, were more appealing. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that I heard that a lot of these county attorneys were moving on. They, they would take the three years and then move on to, let's say, Hillsborough County. Yeah. We, what can we do to change that, to keep good people there? I don't, uh, first of all, we have, a, we have um, th there's a sort of a barrier at the top because we have only so many lead attorneys um, and they don't leave. Um, so, you know, if you want to move on or get promoted, you, you have to have a spots open and we haven't had any spots open for a long period of time. People move on for a number of different reasons. Some is it money, um, you know, but if you told me, um, Kevin, I'll pay you, you know, 10,000 more to go work in Portsmouth, I'd be like, eh, not so much. You know, I, my commute's 10 minutes. You know, I don't want to go somewhere else. So people leave for a lot of different reasons. Could we pay the county attorneys more? Probably. Um, but, but I think that they, you have to find out really why they left. And, and you, you know, some of the people in the, petition that was filed will tell you they left not because of money but because of who was their boss was. Okay. I mean I, and when I looked at the scale uh, not to say that we need more money maybe a shift in the matrix mixing up a little oh, bit absolutely. is the best way to go without increasing the budget you know because the way I viewed it was you know they're getting their training in years one two and three you know, and then they're like, okay, I'm all trained and yeah. ready to go now. I'm a little you. bit seasoned. So, so now is my time to leave we're because we're paying, paying the bill for the for, for the, the training. training yeah. And that's yeah, that's a costly, as you know. So. Anecdotally, that's and then what we have we're to do hearing. it again. Yeah. Yeah. That because we're hearing that we give them enough money for the first couple of years, but then there are greener pastures. Yeah. And I will agree with the commissioner. It's not only for money that people make these changes, but I uh, am hesitant to think that they're leaving because they find the working conditions conditions at the Rockingham County Courthouse uh, to be unpleasant or untenable. Uh, I don't think that that's why anybody's leaving because the county attorney's office is usually about 60 percent women and he's got a really good reputation of hiring and promoting women and I think that's what we have to be looking at. Well, uh, again, I, I think you should read the petition. I don't think it's so much about the county attorney at that point because we've got, we, I, there was at one point, as a legislator, and I'm sure you got the calls too, from all the different attorneys that were pointing to what Brian said, mm -hmm. pointing out that their, um, you know, the pay scale is not in line. Uh, I know, uh, being on the executive committee, that we hear from the commissioners that they have these studies done to see if we're in line. Now, uh, are our attorneys in line? Or? I think Brian hit it on the head. We certainly are in line for the top attorneys, and we are certainly in line for the starting salary. It's the middle salary that's the problem, and the lack of movement. And, and I'm not blaming anyone for the lack of movement. People you know, have been there for 20 years, um, and so you don't have that advancement, eligibility for advancement. So they, sometimes they leave for that. But could we tweak the middle salaries? Absolutely. You know? yeah, take from the beginning, first three. Yeah where it's a top heavy or the beginning heavy and then maybe you know not paying so much in during the training years as I guess. I'll give them a little more because if you're going to have to do all the training again you know it's going to cost us more in the long yeah. run so you got to look at it okay well if we can keep them five years you know, we don't have to pay the training again you know. Mm -hmm.
So yes, because Rockingham is a wonderful place to start your career uh, as an attorney. You get to try cases, and that's what attorneys in this line want to do. They want to get the, up there in front of juries. They want to get up there in front of judges. So we do offer them a lot, and I do think it needs to be tweaked. And that's why we asked Attorney Reams to actually come to the Salaries Committee and to give us his opinion, even though he'd been suspended from office for supervising uh, attorneys at the time. We wanted to get his expertise because he's the one that's actually been staffing and handling the budget. And we felt very honestly that he would be coming back to supervise this department. We felt that these uh, this investigation would go away, that they wouldn't have criminal charges, that they would have to reinstate him. And so we tried to listen to the attorney that knew the job rather than having the attorney general uh, advising the delegation on how we should be running our own county. And, and you know, I, I want to talk about that because this is the second time you mentioned it. You asked Attorney Reams to come to the county, but you didn't inform the current or the interim county attorney that this was happening. Um, and you did it at, at the last minute uh, without any notice to anybody. Um, you, you posted something at Friday at 5 o'clock um, and, and the meeting was on Monday. So nobody knew. Even some of your state reps didn't know that there was a change. And, and I find, found that, you know, just wrong. And it was heavily reported in the newspaper that, that that's what occurred. How do you feel about that? Why, why is it that it had to be so secret that you invited him? If you wanted him there, invite him. But open it up to the public and let everybody know that he's coming. Why did you do that? Well, we did not issue uh, an invitation to uh, the Attorney General's representative in the county, Attorney Bonafetti. Uh, he had been assigned to come and talk to us about a budget that we felt he wasn't responsible for. He didn't come up with the budget uh, he, because it's not his job, and he was going to have to live under the budget because that was not his job. So we wanted to hear from the person that actually uh, does write those budgets, that was familiar with that office, and that would be coming back and would have to live under that budget. And so we did notify Attorney Bonafetti that his meeting was canceled, that we did not need to hear from him. It was not information that would have been enlightening to us. And I do apologize for the fact that some of the state reps did not get timely information. That happens when you have as many of us running around. And we tried to explain to those folks that they weren't being kept in the dark, that we wanted them to know. We even even reheld some of those meetings to make sure that everyone uh, felt part of the conversation. Uh, but it was necessary for us to hear from our real county attorney about these uh, uh, subjects, and I won't apologize for needing him at that office because he was the one that needed to talk to us about his budget. Right, and I think the meeting that you're talking about, I believe that Commissioner Pratt was there when they invited uh, Jim Reeves in it, I believe. He was, she uh, was. She, we learned about it about an hour before it happened. Um, and, it, you know, it was just bad politics, really. Um, the interim county attorney actually prepared the budget. Um, and for him to be lied to, and that's what happened, he was lied to um, by the delegation office. Uh, and that's something I'd like to touch on is the delegation office and the delegation's budget. Um, the delegation's office, which is uh, Representative Waterhouse submitted, their budget doubled this year. And the county can't afford that. They went from a little less than 100,000 to over 200,000. Um, that's the type of budget that their office put together. It was not presented by us, but they thought that was a appropriate. And, and, I, and I can't, we can't afford that kind of leadership in Rockingham County. I right. need to object to that uh, strenuously. <laughs> okay. uh, not only did not, uh, the delegation coordinator didn't lie because uh, Representative Majors, Representative Weiler, and I said, put out the word that Attorney Bonafetti's meeting is canceled. And that was not a lie. We did not need to hear from the Attorney General's representative. We needed to hear from somebody that actually worked at the county. And so it wasn't a lie when we canceled his meeting because we didn't need to hear from him. And to say that we doubled the budget of the delegation is completely disingenuous because uh, the Commissioner Coyle knows that we removed the power to audit from the commissioners because they were not doing audits. And we took those 
those uh, monies into the delegation because the delegation needs answers that were not forthcoming. It turns out lately to get any information from the county commissioners, we have to go through right to know legislation and demand answers. And even then we seem to be ignored. Well, we're going to have to cut this short because we got I, three minutes. We want to make sure you <laughs> yeah, guys get in. We're just about done. And we're going to give you a, each a chance uh, to s put a closing statement in. So we'll, we'll start, um, I guess, uh, since Ke Kevin Coyle started, who, who went first? I went first. All right. So Kevin, we'll let you go. So I, I guess th that I'll say this. Um, you know, I've been called disingenuous. Their budget went from 90 some odd thousand to over 200,000. Their legal budget went up uh, to $50,000. He knows this is all true, um, and there's nothing that he can do to dispute it. He just wants you to ignore it. Um, their delegation coordinator um, that they don't supervise barely works any hours, yet she puts him for 32. Um, th the delegation has done a terrible job in Rockingham County, and they want to blame the commissioners. And that's, you know, not fair. Um, Representative Waterhouse has never been to a county commissioner meeting while I've been there. He talks about, you know, wanting to know information. Well, then show up. That's what you need to do. Um, if you call me, he's never called me. N never once has he made a phone call to say, hey, Kevin, can you get me this information? He's never done that. And I'm his representative. If you want to know things, call me up on the phone and I'll tell you and I'll get what you want. I believe over the last year and a half, I've done a really good job in Rockingham County. I've made very difficult decisions when I knew all of the facts. Uh, and, and I made those decisions based upon the facts. Representative Waterhouse disagrees with them. And he has every right to, to disagree and to run. And I applaud him for running. I think that if you, if you don't like the job I've done, then you run. Um, and, and that's what he's doing. So I give him credit for that. But I think that I've done a good job uh, over the last uh, year and a half, and I would ask uh, that you support me again uh, because I'm running again for Rockingham County Commissioner. Thank you. Uh, again, uh, the commissioner and I look at these things from very different perspectives. We did increase the delegation's budget by decreasing the commissioner's budget. There's no new tax dollars. We were hearing from the commissioners, we didn't do an audit. We did a study or we did a look-see, but the delegation was never provided with information. When we had people actually in the uh, Registrar of Deeds office asking questions about employees, we said, is there a contract? Is there be a study being done? There was no contract. That company disappeared again. So we don't know why they were here, if they got paid any money. The commissioners wouldn't let us know. But to say that we are artificially increasing the budget uh, to pad the delegation, that's completely untrue. We took away from the commissioner because they weren't doing their job, and we gave to the delegation because the delegation isn't getting the information. I think one of the strengths that I offer this position is the 10 years that I've worked with the delegation that I rose from being uh, just a member of a subcommittee to being the clerk of both the executive committee and the delegation itself that uh, I will communicate with the representative. I will let them know what we need to do and yes I agree with Commissioner Coyle. It, a lot of things were done very very poorly over the last two years. And that's what ch I influenced me to run. I don't usually like to primary a fellow Republican, but I felt I needed to in this time. I need a Republican serving in that office that will work with the delegation to let the county do the work that needs to be done. All right, well, that, that's about it. Thank, thank you for being on our show. And um, oh, can I just say one thing? Uh, you know, now I've come on your show. It's turned for you and Jan you and <laughs> Brian to come on my show. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll work that out. Uh, this this has been the Legislators Lounge. You could find us on uh, the internet at dairylounge.com, or you could also find us on YouTube. All our shows are published on YouTube under the Legislators Lounge. So t take a look and see if you can find us. We're also on Facebook, and there's links to all the shows. And once again, thanks for being with us.